Hey guys, this is my new Doom Eternal series. Um, this is the first episode, so this will be quite interesting. Um, I'm playing this game on Nightmare on PC with a controller, just so you know what I'm playing with. Um, yeah, no HUD, because one of you recommended it. I thought it would be fun. Anyway, let's get into it. I'm going to shut up for this cutscene. Against all the evil that hell can conjure. All the wickedness that mankind can produce, we will send unto them only you. Rip and tear until it is done. Love this guitar riff. Alright, so yeah, I'm playing this on my freaking laptop. Not like my old laptop that I took apart, but th <laughs> um, this new one I got. And this game is optimized pretty well. I'm playing in like all high settings, and I'm not, I'm getting no like frame dips or anything. So yeah, this should be this should be pretty good. Even with the OBS in the background, no frame dips. This game is crazy. So um, <clears throat> yeah, as I mentioned, this is on Nightmare, no HUD, everything like that. I'm gonna follow your guys' recommendations because you're my audience and you know views. Uh, but yeah, the the whole objective of this series is just to play through the game. I'll explain what's happening in the story as we go along. Um, you know, right now Earth has been invaded by demons, not good. <laughs> that, that's the basic premise of the story so far. But, um, yeah, the, and I will also talk a lot about theology. That's why this series is called Slaying Heresy. Also, oh, and I'm going to pick up Sticky Bombs for this. Uh, arena coming up. But also, any groups I mention that are actually Christian... I'm not explicitly calling heretics, okay? I'm not condemning anyone, you know? I'm not the final judge God is. So, yeah. Uh, let's get into this. Um, and if you're asking what Nightmare is, it's the hardest difficulty. So, if you're, if you're confused about it. Yeah, sticky bombs, bro. They make this so easy. Um... Yeah, we'll start off with the, on the Baptist Church. We'll start off with their uh, how they view the Bible, and I guess we'll go from there. 
so the Baptist Church's view of the Bible is that it's the ultimate authority. The church has like almost no authority at all. That's the Baptist view. Most non-denominationals are basically Baptists because they share this view. Um, so yeah, if you hear someone say they're non-denominated, they're basically Baptist. There's probably a few minor theological differences that their pastor uh, believes in, but yeah, they're basically Baptist. Anyway, so the Baptists think that the Bible is the ultimate authority and that sola scriptura is true, okay? Which I don't necessarily agree with. Um, my reasoning for this, since I am uh, right now a Roman Catholic that is going that that is inquiring orthodoxy, meaning I'm probably going to convert. I'll give my reasons for that later in a later episode of this series. But um, the the Baptist Church's view of the Bible is that it's the ultimate authority. I've already established that. The Orthodox view, and so does the and the Catholic view, since they're not Protestant and don't share the doctrine of sola scriptura, their view uh, is slightly different. And I'll get into that after this cutscene. Okay, so, yeah, basically what happened, that hell priest died. Hell, there's three, the three hell priests uh, in this game control the invasion. Once they're all dead, the invasion is pretty much done for. That's what you need to know so far. Okay, so, the Baptist view of the Bible is that it's the ultimate authority. The orthodox view is that it's not because Jesus Christ established a church which assembled the Bible. Um, yeah, and I don't see how there's an, really an argument against that. I mean, it, it's good. The, the good part about Sola Scriptura is that people will take Scripture seriously when they take Sola Scriptura seriously, obviously. So, and Scripture should be taken seriously. It's the Word of God. But, there was also a church established by God, so you should trust that church. That's the orthodox view. Um, and I don't, again, I don't really see a counter-argument to, like, what are you going to say? Jesus Christ did not establish this church? Um, I mean, I guess you could say that he established the Roman Catholic Church, but with what's going on now, that's, it's pretty clear that the Roman Catholics split off from the original church, and I'll get into that. Um, so I'll get into that in a later episode. Oh, I should not have done that. That's an Arachnatron. That's a very heavy demon. <laughs> so, why move? Okay. Well, some of these kills are brutal, guys. I'm not even gonna lie to you. This game is very gory. Uh. I'm gonna full auto real quick. There we go. And you're dead. What the? I didn't even click the pause button. Uh, great guys, this is this is a, this recording is a disaster. Um. So yeah, that that's my view in Solo Scriptura. I don't necessarily think it's the truth. And if Solo Scriptura is true, it just completely refutes. Uh, it completely completely. Re refutes sola fide and the th we'll, we'll talk about sola fide too i mean they, they believe in that sola fide basically means faith alone i don't think faith alone because works do matter and baptists actually agree on this they think that having works is a sign of good faith which 
when both views are taken into are taken into account there's not much of a difference it's very it's a very slight difference we both agree that works are essential because genuine faith has works for baptists and the view of um the orthodox is that you just need works and salvation so they're not all that different and yeah, but yeah sola, sola fide isn't necessarily true because if you're just to come i mean if you just don't repent of any of your sins and you're just like jesus christ is my savior are you really saved you know are, are you really do you really have gratitude that he saved you from eternal torment well not eternal torment but from the pain uh the pain of, reje of rejecting god through sin uh okay so yeah now we'll talk about the sacraments um so the orthodox have seven sacraments we got the eucharist um the eucharist confession sacrament of the sick uh there there's really only a couple important ones that we need to go over in this video uh i'm thinking chrismation which is basically confirmation you got baptism uh I'm trying to think. I should have this memorized. Uh, anyway. Uh, yeah, so, th the thing is, the, the reason I'm mentioning we have seven sacraments is that the Baptists have cut down on the sacraments a lot, as with most Protestants. Most Protestants, I don't even think Lutherans have all seven. Uh, so yeah, oh and also chrismation, I forgot to mention this. Chrismation is the same thing as confirmation in the Roman Catholic Church. At least that's what I from the research I've done, that's what uh it is. <laughs> but uh because it brings people into the church. Oh look at that chainsaw. So uh yeah, so Baptists view the sacraments as not really holding any merit I, well I wouldn't say merit but more as a symbolic thing that they don't really do anything uh, like that baptism is just a symbolic expression that one actually has faith so and one wants to enter the church so it's basically that they, they combined confirmation and baptism and then just like I guess removed uh, the spiritual aspect of it but yeah yeah, but that's the view, that's the view of Baptists, and this is a you can naturally assume this as they have again they have a very low church view. Low church basically means that you don't think the church holds much power, um, or authority. So oh my, uh, so yeah. Anyway, I don't agree with this low view of the sacraments. The reason why is because they were given to us by Jesus. They weren't just handed to us to say, oh, this is just a symbol. Uh, and the true original sacraments actually do hold spiritual power. Um, because baptism does save you. I wouldn't go as far to say that original sin exists. But baptism definitely has a spiritual aspect to it. Uh, I'm not like super sure on the orthodox view of baptism, but I know the Roman Catholic view is that you're born with the sin of Adam and Eve, and that baptism get, uh, baptism gets rid of it. Uh, it goes by. So, yeah. But again, original sin is not a true doctrine in my opinion. I'll get into that later. The the, the the Roman Catholic doctrine of sin. Uh, okay, so um, so what we've gone over so far, we've gone over one of the sacraments that the Baptists have. The other sacrament being uh, the Eucharist. It, they call it the Lord's Supper. Same thing. Uh, the difference being that the Baptists, uh, the Baptists also view this as symbolic when, and don't believe in transubstantiation. 
Transubstantiation is the idea that... Okay, I'm gonna get pick up Precision Bolt because it's good. You'll see why later. Just trust me on that. Uh, the view... What was it? I keep losing my train of thought when I play this game. Okay. Uh, we were talking about the Eucharist. So, transubstantiation is the view that um when the when uh, a mass takes place or a divine liturgy or the, the the whatever the worship okay whenever that takes place and the priest elevates the host and everything uh it's the view that the uh the bread actually fit trend transubstantiates transforms into the flesh of jesus not a not a truly like absolute physical transformation into actual flesh but the substance transforms uh to have like the qualities of the flesh but not the appearance or the taste so yeah and th this and the reason uh this view is held is because jesus says amen amen i say to you unless you eat of my flesh and drink of my blood which will be spilled for you in the new covenant you do not have eternal life in you uh and the this verse in my opinion is very clear i'm sure there's some evangelical theology that that has reasoning for why they don't believe that it physically transforms but uh but yeah it seems very clear to me because uh, i mean i know that not everything in the bible should be taken absolutely literally but i think this is one of the exceptions well not not an exception but this is one of the things that should be taken literally it has a lot of emphasis placed on it amen amen i'll say to you you Usually, Jesus says, Amen, I say to you, when he wants to emphasize something. So, he, this was a very important when he said this. Um, anyway, yeah, that's my, that's the problem I have with the Baptist view of the Eucharist. And the real thing with Baptists is that on Sunday, I mean, they still worship God, okay? I'm not, and they, they definitely... Dude, I need to get ammo. Okay, they still worship God, and they definitely stress the importance of having a relationship with Him because it's an individualistic church. I forgot to mention that's one of the unique qualities of the Baptist church. Um, but th there are problems that I have mentioned that come with having a low church. Uh, and yeah. And I'll explain what the Baptist Low Church, what happens at a Low Church. And this, this is, this is for evangelicals. The only thing that really happens at the church, they go there to really just hear a sermon. Uh, that's the main thing. With all the, a lot of it's like worship music and stuff. And like, I'm not saying worship music is wrong. Like, I, there's nothing wrong with singing about your passion. For, uh, your passion for Christianity. I don't see anything wrong with that. But, um, the, it, the, it just feels like a rock concert. I'm not even gonna lie. If you just, if you compare, like, Catholic and Orthodox hymns in the liturgy to whatever happens in a Baptist church or a very low church Protestant, yeah, it, it's, it's kind of, yeah, the comparison is kind of insane. Um, it, it kind of makes the Protestant service look goofy. So, and I, again, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with worship music, but I'm saying maybe church isn't the place for it, and you should probably sing hymns. So, yeah. But sermons, I like these. I like how they stress importance on sermons, and that, that's a good thing, because I don't think... I get a lot out of my priest sermons when I do go to... Uh, to mass and stuff i get a lot a lot out of it uh and many catholics and non-protestants don't really uh, we stress the eucharist which is good but we don't stress the sermon either 
And the sermon is one of the more... I wouldn't, it's not more important than the sacrament that you receive at a uh, Mass, but it's still important. Um, and, and uh, yeah, you should learn something from your sermon, your priest's sermons. Because uh, I, I would encourage you, if you don't normally listen during the sermon, to do it. Because it's helped me through some stuff. And, yes, yeah, so, and sometimes God has... Uh, delivered a message to me that I was really in need of. Um, it, it, he definitely does it through the sermon, so I would recommend listening. Uh, you'll probably get something out of it. What is happening? Why am I stuck in a corner? Okay. <laughs> Rest in peace, I guess. Yeah, guys, keep moving in this game, or you'll die. I guess I'm not the ultimate demon slayer. I think I'm pretty de decent at this game, but... Uh, Bro, chill. Get quick scoped, kid. Watch the pool. You guys need to chill. Look at that eyeball. Okay. Um. But yeah, listen to your sermons. They're pretty fire. So, it and they're they're both different sides of the scale. I mean, kind of in my view. One stresses, the, one stresses the sacrament enough, okay, but they don't stress the sermon, and then one doesn't stress, and one doesn't stress the uh, the sacrament at all, and just stresses the sermon way too much. Well, not way too much, but enough. So, and I think that as much as we like to. As much as we like to uh, consider our theology superior to Protestant theology, we can still learn things from Protestants. I don't think that everything they say is wrong. Well, <laughs> I don't think that, yeah, everything they say is, there's not, I mean, there are a lot of theological issues that I think are just not right, but uh, I wouldn't say that everything they do is wrong. You can look at their actions and they're genuine people. And that's the thing with Baptists. A lot, pretty much all of the Baptists I've met are very genuine Christians and they actually want to uh, serve God. And I think that comes from their emphasis on a relationship with God, which is another thing Catholics don't stress very much or Orthodox. Orthodox stress tradition way more than that. And it's kind of, and I think that, again, we can learn things from Protestants. I think, and honestly, if we all just learned stuff from each other and unified under one church that had the right theology, that would be the best thing to happen for Christians. But yeah, and then Muslims wouldn't have that argument of, oh, you can't, you can't uh, even figure yourselves out. How are you the true, yeah. So, we'll, we'll get into, like, why I'm not... Well, why I think Muslim Islam is false and stuff later, and we'll get into oh, we'll get into atheism later. Trust me. So, uh, anyway, yeah, as I was saying, Baptists are very genuine in their faith, and they actually, and yeah, that comes from wanting to have a relationship with God, uh, and having a good prayer life and stuff. And also, they know their scripture. Like, holy crap! I, my my friends that are Baptists, I'll say something, and they'll just quote a Bible verse, and I'll be like, what the hell? Where do they get, how do they know that? So, they've got their verses memorized. And memorizing verses doesn't necessarily mean that you're a better Christian than someone. But memorizing verses is still a good thing. The final thing I want to talk about, it's a sacrament I forgot to mention, is confession. This is a hot topic for many Protestants, including evangelicals. Um, and, yeah, so Baptists don't have confession and I want Baptists to hear me out on this okay they're gonna say why can't we just go straight to God to confess our sins you can uh, it, it's definitely a thing God's not bound by the sacraments he can forgive the sins he wants to forgive if you ask for forgiveness and have a repentant heart however confession is important because confession uh, helps you repent it's a very good tool in helping you repent of your sins. Um, when I've gone to confession in the past, my uh, 
I'd confess my sins, and the priest would give me penance, and I'd go do my penance. And after I did my penance, it felt so much easier to uh not to not commit that sin again, or not be. And I didn't feel like I was very tempted by it. <laughs> it I know it kind of sounds ridiculous to them because they've probably never been to confession, but if you are a Protestant, I would encourage you to at least confess your sins to a friend because it does take a weight off your shoulder too. It, feel, it feels so good walking out of the confessional. That's one of the best feelings in the world. So I would very much encourage that if you're Protestant. And yeah, we got a cutscene coming up that finishes this level and that'll be the end of the episode. So yeah, I love you all my Baptist brothers and sisters. I'm just explaining my theology. Uh, and yeah, we'll get back to it next episode and we'll start slaying demons. Anyway, I'll explain in the outro what happened in the cutscene. Humanity's chance to repent, to give service to us. You cannot resist the will of the Khan Maker. Activating the portal now. Only the seal who was meant to enforce it. Okay, so basically, what just happened? That angelic being is in charge of the demon invasion, so she can harvest energy from human souls. Yeah, that's the that's the plot line, and yeah, all the like non-believer that yeah that those religious terms were just a bunch of mumbo jumbo for this game. Um. <laughs> so yeah, I'm gonna finish off on the Fortress of Doom. We're gonna pick up all the attachments and stuff. So. So yeah, next episode, we'll go through Exaltia. I'm going to pick up the Flame Belch, which gives me armor. And then I'm going to go get that Sentinel Crystal. And yeah, uh, I'm going to end the episode there. So, uh, what should I get, guys? I'm thinking a health upgrade. That's probably useful. Quick draw belt is good too, so. Getting steam, steam achievements, yeah. Okay. Love you guys. I'm out.